Hey guys, welcome back. Recently I purchased this Exceed Mad Storm. I only paid $35 for it. This is gonna be a pretty good midterm type update as to what my plans are and what I'm considering doing. I wrote out three pieces of paper. I know it's a little bit crude, but you know what? Keep an eye on each of these options. I have three options as to what I plan on doing with this RC. So let's now take a chance to look over them and see what I think is probably the best choice. But before we start that, let's just look at what I got going on here. So you guys remember before the body was really bad, it was dirty. Look at how nice it washed. It's almost brand new. I was able to repair the front here. It looks pretty spotless now, actually, I can say that. Well, it looks pretty good. I mean, I could paint it, but it's fine, it doesn't bother me. The inside, it's mostly straight, it's solid. It's, this is just hot glue and drywall tape, guys. Like about three layers of drywall tape and hot glue. And it looks pretty good. I mean, I don't really care about it as long as the crack doesn't keep going on to the rest of the body. Uh, because I really don't feel like spending any money on this RC. In terms of the chassis, so I have this thing pretty open right now. And it is a little bit cleaned up. It was just really filthy last time. I just wanted to take out a wheel from my uh, T-Max. This is a fairly large Traxxas wheel. This is about the same size as a Traxxas Summit wheel. And look at this. This wheel dwarfs the Traxxas wheel. So these are pretty nice wheels. They cleaned up really well actually. You know, if you put some WD-40 on the sidewall, it'll be almost like new. Let's check out this other side. I put a little bit of WD-40 and you could still tell that it's not bad, right? I mean, it's not a brand new wheel, but it's, it's better than it was before. So right now, I have the chassis uh, pretty bare. The motor is outside. Uh, I don't have any of the electronics in the car, other than obviously the stock servos. Uh, someone commented that I should replace the stock servos. Well, you know what, why don't we test them out? So the remote actually does work. I had to kind of jerry-rig this a little bit. So um, the battery compartment is missing one of the metal uh, clasps in there. So just to create a contact, I had to stick in this piece of metal, which is an Allen key. You know, this is a temporary measure. Obviously, I'm going to convert this to run 2.4 gigahertz later. But let's just test it out. So remote power's on. Let me power on the RC. And look at that. Servo's not bad. I wouldn't say it's that slow. Throttle works too. Look at that. You see that throttle servo? Brakes work. Let's see if we can see on the couch. You see that? It even steers pretty okay on the couch. And there's a lot of resistance here, so you know what? Servo's not horrible. I'm probably gonna keep the steering servo. It's not bad. Alright, let's turn off the electronics. That was kind of funny, you know, I had to stick this thing in there, right? Hey, whatever. What are you gonna do? It's 35 bucks. You gotta make it run somehow, right? So far, the only part I had to purchase for the chassis was a rear drive shaft. Uh, so when I initially bought it, it was missing this rear center drive shaft from the diff. Now that we have it, the diff works. Now as I spin the spur, all the wheels spin, everything is solid. This would be a fairly easy brushless conversion. And I gotta tell you, I'm leaning towards this last option right here. Um, some of you guys wanted me to do option one, which is return it back to stock. So I made a list of all the parts I would need and my approximate cost you know, looking at the bottom dollar, pretty much the cheapest I could possibly find and get away with. And also having to use some of my own parts that I already have. So the minimum I would need to make this motor run again is at least a pull start. I don't have a pull start for this engine. Uh, that is about, you know, a little under 20 bucks last time I checked on the Nitro RCX website. I would need a full clutch kit. So I don't have clutch shoes, I don't have clutch springs, I don't have a clutch bell. I would need all these things. I would need the bearings. I only have one bearing here on this uh, pilot shaft. Uh, screws, I might have some, but either way, this would probably cost me about $50, you know, if I got all these parts as cheap as, as I possibly could, and if this motor actually ran. So I assembled the motor back up. There is no glow plug in here, uh, but if I spin the flywheel, there's a good amount of compression. Like, I'm having a hard time spinning this. So, just so you guys know, these larger motors, they still have a lot of compression at top dead center. The piston and the sleeve are fairly tight at the top, and oftentimes, the pull start will just rip 
uh, when a user is starting to start it kind of erratically, uh, especially if it's flooded. I've ripped pull starts like that before on .21 and larger engines. That is probably what happened here. Uh, I remember on my Ofna Hyper 8 port, I had to put in a metal pull start. So, you know, that's what we used to do back in the day. So this is option one, right? So um, back to stock, make this engine run again, hopefully if it even works. Now the bottom here, I put that I need faith because I honestly, guys, I need faith, hope, prayer, wishes, dreams, uh, popcorn. It doesn't matter. I need a lot of that to make this work. Otherwise, the engine is basically in like new condition. We have a second option. Second option is to stick in a regular 3650 size motor, which is a motor like this. I showed this system in my previous video. Uh, this is basically the cheapest brushless 540 size system. It's about $28 that I paid for it. It can run up to a 3S LiPo and it is 5200 kV. Now I ran into a massive problem when I was about to uh, install this. So these motors have a three millimeter shaft. Uh, the only pinion that I can get that would run mod one, mod one is uh, basically the amount of spacing that this spur gear would require. So either way, I would have to get a pinion that is an eighth scale mod one type pinion. And mod one pinions are generally five millimeter shafts. This is a three millimeter shaft. Uh, so I can't use this motor. There is a pinion available for this that I can get in a three millimeter size from, a, from some kind of hobow. It's about 14 to $15 shipped. And that's what I have here as option two. So I would have to get a three millimeter mod one pinion. And chances are that might not be a very good idea. The reason is uh, this is a very heavy nitro car. It has aluminum chassis. Guess what? It even has a four millimeter uh, shock tower front and rear. So this is a, a really heavy RC. These motors are designed for cars really the size of Stampede at most, maybe a slash, but that's about it. Uh, whenever you're going above that weight, you want a five millimeter uh, motor shaft. But worst case scenario, I can't get that. And then all I would need is a motor mount. The motor mount would look much like this. This is a WL Toys 540 motor mount for one of my RCs. I basically could just reuse this. It's not a big deal. All I would do, let me give you a visual of this, right? All I would do is basically this. Get rid of these engine mounts for the nitro motor. Then I would drill some holes on the bottom of the chassis to accompany these four screw holes, these countersunk holes. Now just stick it like this. Doesn't really matter how high it is. It would just be straight and basically it would connect to the uh, center drive like this. Either way, it would work. At a minimum, at a minimum, this would be the cheapest option, you know, but uh, not a very safe option. So let's see. The third option is really what I think I will be going with. Now, there's still a little variance kind of in a third option. So I would have to get a 3660 motor. A 3660 motor is uh, just like the motor I have in my Stampede. Let me show you guys a uh, little clip here of it. It's a very powerful motor. But what's interesting about the 3660 is since it's still 36, this is the millimeter size of the circumference of the motor. So the actual can is the same exact diameter. The only thing that would be different is the length of the can. So instead of having six, 50 millimeters, let's say in the standard motor, I would have a little bit of a longer can. So I would have no problem mounting a longer can in this chassis, that would be easy. I could still use this cheap motor mount that I feel comfortable using and I know that I can install. And the best thing about using this 3660 motor is it also has the same exact four millimeter banana style plugs. I don't have to do any conversions with plugs. I could simply just fit them in like this, you know, no matter what. And guess what? I could use the same ESC. So I could still use a 10th scale ESC with uh, basically an eighth scale brushless motor. Um, that would be about 55 or $35. So depending on whether I wanted to buy a 4S capable ESC, that would be 55 bucks. Right now on eBay, as of making this video, I found a really nice 3660 eight scale system 
for an up to two for for up to four s batteries for about forty dollars so forty dollars that that is a bargain for the same uh you know type of off-brand ebay system which which they're fine i've ran them before there's really no complaints there or i could just buy the motor this will be the cheapest way to go on option three if i just bought the motor obviously i still need the pinion and i still need the motor mount but the motor i can get for about 22 dollars right now so you know in that case i would save some money 35 will be the cheapest way to go i really don't think that this ESC would burn up with a uh, you know a larger motor like this 3660. I just need the five millimeter shaft. The reason is the batteries I run are not very high discharge batteries. I generally don't go above 30 C continuous current. So these uh, the way it works is you have a motor that draws a certain amount of max amps. You have an ESC that gives a certain amount of max amps. As long as your motor doesn't draw above the ESC, you are at optimal performance. Generally, your ESC will be able to handle this motor. And even then, your battery probably won't even be able to supply the amount of uh, burst current the ESC can even give to the motor. So you're limited in like multiple ways, you know, in terms of protection. Now, of course, if you run really high in batteries with like 60C continuous discharge, you know, you might run into a situation where you might want an eight scale uh, electronic speed control. And in my case, I'm going the cheapest route possible and I think as of now I am leaning towards option 3 and just buying the 3660 motor. In regards to the shocks, I've rebuilt two already and check out this damping action in the front. Look at that. It's really good guys. Look at that. It is really good. The shocks are good. I left one um, I'm rebuilt for you I just kind of added a little bit of shock wheel because I ran out of shock wheel these shocks are so huge because they're big bore racing shocks that I had to order more shock wheel so that was like eight bucks but look at this rebound as I pre press in the shaft look at how nice and even and smooth that is through the stroke that's really nice look at that that's what you want to see now I have a little bit of a thicker oil in here right now I ordered a little bit of a lower weight so right now this is 80 weight I ordered 60 weight I think 60 for this would be perfect so there it is guys I gave you a rundown of the multiple options I have I'd really appreciate if you put down in the comments below which option you want to see me go with as I said I'm leaning towards option 3 and just getting the regular 3660 brushless motor I think that'll do the job here and uh, it's probably the best idea to keep costs down and once again, thanks so much for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the progress of rehabilitating this monster.